This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to design and create a retro punk rock underground poster. I provided a folder that contains four separate assets that we'll use to create it. One is a Photoshop template that includes three layers, a piece of torn paper, a photo film frame, and an old yellowed creased paper base. When you first click the link to the template, you'll see only one of these layers. However, when you open the template in Photoshop, all three layers will be there. The second asset in the folder is a photo of a punk rock frontman. The third asset is a photo of a coffee cup stain. And the fourth is a rough ink brush that we'll use later. In addition, I provided links to two fonts that we'll use in this poster. You'll find all the links to the assets in my video's description or project files. The first step is to open the photo of the punk rocker. We'll separate him from the background by making a selection around him. There are many ways to do this, but for this example, open your Quick Selection tool and click the Select Subject button at the top. Photoshop does its best to isolate the subject and makes a selection around it. If it missed some areas, Make sure the tool's radius is approximately 5 pixels and carefully drag the tool over those missing areas. To delete the selection from areas outside our subject, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over them. To check the selection, press Q on your keyboard. To revert it back into a selection, press Q again. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the photo. This masks out the background. We'll convert our image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. Press V to open the Move tool and drag it onto the tab of the template. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. Drag it so his elbow is flush with the left side and that the bottoms meet. We'll move this layer down to just above the paper base. We can drag it manually or press Ctrl or Command and the left bracket key on your keyboard twice. We'll make a copy of it. However, before we do, it's important to know that if we make changes to the original or the copy, the changes will be applied to both. If we want to edit either of them without affecting the other, right click or secondary click on the layer to open the flyout list and click New Smart Object via Copy. Now the two smart objects can be edited separately without affecting each other. Hide the copy and make the original active. Before we add filters to it, let's check our foreground and background colors. We want black to be our foreground color and white to be our background color. If they aren't, press D on your keyboard to revert them to their default colors. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Sketch folder and click Halftone Pattern. The size is 2, the contrast is 8, and the pattern type is dot. Click the plus icon at the bottom right corner to duplicate the filter. We'll replace the duplicate with photocopy. Make the detail 12 and the darkness 50. Click the plus icon again to duplicate the filter. We'll replace this duplicate with torn edges. Make the image balance 50, the smoothness 15, and the contrast 22. Change its blend mode to multiply. Let's save a little space in the layers panel by collapsing the smart filters. Make the top subject layer visible and active. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. 
click halftone pattern and click the trash can icon to delete this filter. Click it again to delete the photocopy filter. The remaining filter is torn edges. Make the image balance 16, the smoothness 1, and the contrast 14. Change its blend mode to darken. Next, we'll blend the paper through our subject. Hide the top subject and double click an empty area of the bottom subject to open the layer style window. We'll use Blend If to blend the subject with the paper. Basically, Blend If uses the luminosity of pixels. The current layer is named this layer in older versions. This represents the active layer in our layers panel, which in our case is the bottom subject layer. The underlying layer represents all the layers below the active layer, which in this case is the paper base. When we move the sliders of the underlying layer, it punches the shadows or the highlights of the paper through the subject. We can blend it smoothly by placing our cursor in the middle of the icon and pressing Alt or Option. When we click it, this splits the icon in half. Dragging the inside half to the center blends the highlight smoothly. For this image, let's drag it to approximately 200. Drag the right half to approximately 230. Split the underlying shadows icon and drag the right half to approximately 180 and the left half to approximately 150. Let's collapse the smart filters. Make the top subject visible and as before, double click an empty area of this layer to open its layer style window. Split the underlying highlights icon and drag the inside half to 210 and the right half to 230. Split the underlying shadows icon and drag the right half to approximately 145 and the left half to 50. Make the torn paper layer active. We'll place a new layer above it by clicking the New Layer icon. Open the Horizontal Type tool and type Picker. Type in Got Heroin or any other font you want to use for this project. I'll type in 350 points, but feel free to make it any size you like, depending on the font you pick and the number of characters in your text. I'll make the aliasing smooth and left alignment. Click the color box to open the color picker. Pick a color for your text. I already know the color I want, so I'll type it into the hexadecimal field. E, 8, 0, F, 0, 0. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Click on your document and type out your text. If you have more than one line of text, to adjust the space between the lines, known as letting, highlight the lines and click the Character Paragraph icon or go to Window and Character. Place your cursor over the letting icon and click and drag it to the right or left. If you want to adjust the size of any of your lines of text, highlight that line and click and drag the text icon. To reposition your text, open your Move tool and move it. If you want to rotate it, press Ctrl or Command T to open the Transform tool. Go to a corner and rotate it to an angle you like. Control or Command click the thumbnail of the torn paper to select its shape. Hide the torn paper layer and make the frame layer active. Press Alt or Option as you click the layer mask icon. This makes an inverted layer mask. Make the torn paper layer active and make a new layer above it. Press D to revert your foreground and background colors back to their default black and white. 
Open your brush tool and brush picker. Scroll to the bottom of the list and open the rough ink brush folder I provided. Click the brush inside the folder. Make its size 250 pixels and brush over your text. Since this brush layer is below our text layer in the Layers panel, the brush is being applied under your text. Close the Character panel and open the Coffee Cup Stain document. Press V to open your Move tool and drag the image onto the tab of the template. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. Change its Blend mode to Multiply. Drag it to an area you like. Open your Horizontal Type tool. Press X to reverse your foreground and background colors so white is your foreground color. Open the Type Picker and pick a font for the lower part of your poster. I'll pick Splash Cat, which is the second font I provided. I'll make its size 160 points. Click on an area you want your text to appear and type it out. To adjust the letting, as before, highlight your text, click the character panel icon, and drag the letting icon to the right or left. If you want to adjust its overall size, drag the size icon. If you want to adjust the size of just a character or a word, highlight it and drag the size icon. To raise or lower the letting of this newly sized word, drag the baseline shift icon. If you want to rotate your text at an angle or adjust its overall size, open your Move tool and open the Transform tool. Go to a corner and rotate it to an angle you like, then press Enter or Return. Control or Command click the large T of your text layer to select your text's shape. Hide the text and make the top subject active. Alt or Option click the layer mask icon to make an inverted layer mask of the selection. We'll copy the layer mask and place it next to the bottom subject by pressing and holding Alt or Option as we drag the copy down next to the bottom subject. Make a new layer and change its Blend Mode to Hard Light. Click the foreground color to open the color picker. Pick a color that will brush over your lower text. I'll type in 900 twice. Press B to open back your brush tool and brush over your text. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.